Hello and welcome to this, uh, the first in a series of tutorials where we'll be looking at bump maps, normal maps, standard displacement maps, 32-bit displacement maps, and vector displacement maps. So I'm going to break these into sections um, as there's probably too much to actually handle in one big lump of a tutorial. So this is the first tutorial where we'll actually be looking at creating a bump map within RenderMan for Maya. So bump maps are something which are quite simple and well understood by most graphic artists or CG artists. They've been around since about the 1980s, um, first invented by uh, Jim Blinn, I believe. So they're used frequently in computer games or were used until the introduction of normal maps, which is another paradigm for explaining the way in which a texture can actually influence the reflection of light, which is what a bump map does. So I'm going to start off very simply by making a plane, which you'll see lots of planes being made by me. So making a simple plane just on the floor there. And I'm going to turn off my grid so I don't actually have to see it. Um, I'm going to apply a simple material. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just use the random interface and drop a map material onto it. So there's a map material within random and just dropped onto it and I'm going to do a quick render of what this looks like. So it looks like this. Okay. Um, it looks like this. This is the way the material has been set up in Renderman map materials. What we get, Renderman Studio map materials, what we get is the first section is basically to do with color and transparency and the next section is to do with um, displacement. Now the default displacement is set disabled. The next thing we can actually do with displacement is actually set it to bump. Now, bump mapping will actually appear in the screen when we put a texture into that. Let's just re-render this and see it. Okay, still seeing nothing. Now in Photoshop I produced a bump map. This spectacular bump map is made by having a black background writing high onto it and um, blurring it slightly to actually get less sharp edges to it. Okay, so that material now, which I've saved out as a TIFF, just go back into RenderMan and I'm going to apply it into the displacement slot here because this float displacement is actually where we drop a bump material into the standard map material. Let me work with a file look for it here and it's there's my tiff which I'm importing so as it stands at the moment I'll re-render it and we don't see an awful lot the reason being we still haven't set a scale for this the displacement scale needs to be set otherwise it zeros it out so let me just set it to one and re-render and we're beginning to see the effect of the light on that texture. Now one thing I want to set in actual effect, just going forward here, this file I want to change my settings, and this is just good practice. I don't want to have filtering on and I want to make sure that my input type is linear sRGB because this is just a um, it's a grayscale image which is driving information so we don't actually want to have any color correction on this, we don't change gamma. So let me just re-render it. Okay, still getting a good result there. Going back to our material, if I increase this scale, we'll see what we get. So it appears to be actually higher. Now it appears to be higher, but let's just have a look from the side of our object here. Just going side on behind my window. There. When I re-render this, you'll see there's actually no change to the geometry. This is purely the way in which light appears to be reflected from a surface. That's what a bump map is. Okay, now while we're here, we can just quickly explore the way in which a similar image can actually be used to create displacement. This will be real displacement within our geometry. Now I know that my displacement scale is going to be far too large here. So changing from displacement, or sorry, from bump 
to displacement. And re-rendering this, we start to see the micro polygons which Renderman creates are actually being displaced, they're actually being moved. It's not just an optical illusion that light, it is actually moving micro polygons. So this is one of the main differences between bump mapping and displacement mapping. Displacement mapping actually moves the micro polygons. Okay, worthwhile understanding this. Now with this, good practice would generally be with displacement mapping that we should set extra renderment attributes for displacement so we can actually set our displacement bound which is how far away displacement bound will actually be how far we can actually set the boundary for this it helps with the calculation and re-render it will look pretty similar another thing which I generally like to do is in the oops in the actual object itself I like to actually set the random and subdivision scheme there just to make sure that we have decent subdivision should we should we need it let's re-render this okay um, so that's basically displacement and bump now the displacement we're working with here is a standard 8 bits per channel TIFF that won't give us a huge amount of information if we have a lot of height which we'll see this breaking down now I'm going to actually look side on and I'm going to change my material so the displacement scale is going to be set to say 50 and render we see we're getting an awful lot of artifacting around here and steppiness. Let me just zoom in here. There's not sufficient information to actually give us a lot of detail between this low point and this high point here. So for this reason we actually use ZBrush, Mudbox or other higher order content creation packages to work with high resolution meshes and then bake out displacement maps at either 16-bit or 32-bit. And we'll also use um, ZBrush to render out normal maps. Now, normal maps are another way of defining bump um, using the RGB channels rather than just a grayscale channel. Um, one of the reasons why normal maps are used is in actual fact that on the calculation at render time, it requires slightly less code to actually do that. So the next thing we'll have a look at is working a little bit in um, ZBrush to produce some normal maps, some 16-bit displacement maps, and also some 32-bit displacement maps. So they'll follow the next couple of tutorials. I'm going to stop here for the moment, and we'll get back into doing some stuff with ZBrush in a few minutes.